We know the last expansion of this three-part series is going to be called The Last Titan. Who is The Last Titan? Pyro starts to chat with his lore a little bit and seemingly reveals some clues of who that can be. Let's check this out. Any uh, theories of cool stuff we might see with Ajul Nirab? Um, well, I think that we'll get to see w what I'm, I guess, excited for. One of the things that I always found really interesting about um, the Nerubians was their architecture, their cities, their technology Morning, that they have. And I think that's one of the things that I'm most interested in looking at going forward is like, we have very seldom looked at in in detail the actual like technological advancements or um, philosophical views of these older um, you know civilizations, uh, and I think that it's fascinating. I think it's something that there's a lot. To Their be architecture from. is cool. There's a lot of history that exists there. I think there's you know there would be a lot of evidence showing you know potentially. You know, how did they evolve to this point? What did these civilizations, what did these communities like really stand for? Like what were their one, ideals? One thing that I always found very interesting about the Nerubians was how they were able to resist the Scourge. If you know anything you like about the Arthas storyline and Wrath of the Lich King and all that, the Nerubians in particular were very hard for Arthas to deal with because they were very resistant to Scourge magic and being raised and all that stuff. So I, I'm wondering if they're going to touch on any of that uh, going forward here about how they resisted the Scourge uh, their ability to fight against Arthas and the Scourge and all that, because again, the Scourge is supposedly, you know, it's like this death magic that came from uh, from the Jailer. Unfortunately, it's connected that way now. And the Jailer always had this whole thing about destroying the world soul or getting the world soul of Azeroth. We don't know what he wanted to do, but he was trying to stop what is to come, right? Those were his final words. And now I think we're going to see what is to come. It's going to happen. It's going to come. So we're going to find out. Like, yeah, I did just I'm, say that. I'm of the opinion that the empires that existed during the days of the it's old It's all gods, connected. Like, I, I'm starting to think the more that they keep talking about, oh, paint the paint the Black Empire as an age of suffering and despair, it's making me think more and more that, like, it. maybe it wasn't like that at all. Maybe it wasn't like that at all. Strange theory, but do you think there's a chance that Void doesn't actually exist? That More void like doesn't exist. Projection created by the Titans to stray us away from what we should actually be focused on. Yeah. I think the void yeah. exists, but the void lords don't. Yeah, I think that the void is ultimately the fault of the Titans anyway, and I do think that. Well, I, the look, by by definition, when you hear the word void, isn't void just a lack of of things? It's like it's like a nothingness. So I mean, the void not existing may might fit in with that, but a, a, a void is essentially nothing. There is nothing. There is the void. That's it. A void of anything. That's what a void is. Do the void lords exist? Uh, I think they do. And this guy's trying to say maybe that the titans are the void lords. Maybe. But all in all, I I, I do think we have void lords. I think that, who knows, maybe Zalatesh is a void lord, for all we know. Maybe she's like this, uh, you know, void lord that's lost all of its power and now is regaining them. And the way to, you know, the way to finish that is Azeroth's soul. I don't know. But I, and Void are essentially used as manipulation nothing. tactics. Yeah. And I think that they're both extremely dangerous. They're essentially like one and the same force when you look at it. Uh, from then how can anyway, we have uh, Void Elves yeah, I, to sell I, an yeah, expansion, of course? That's how I mean, we talk about Do I think about. the Void is, is real? Uh, yes, but do I think that there are entities behind it? <laughs> you know, these incomprehensible shadow be entities known as Void Lords that we've you know been told about in the past? No, I don't really think that. Um, it just seems very abstract and hard to pin down. And they just never get mentioned, you know? For, for the fact that the old gods apparently were created by them, like, it, the old gods never mention them. And they never really talk about them, which is kind of strange, I think. Uh, so, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> something to think about. But yeah, I think, uh, back to the other question, uh, the, the Nerubians, I think that these older empires, the Klaxi, I think that they were, to a degree, like, highly sophisticated. When you they had empresses, they had, months. like... Uh, social structures they had right they had fucking cities like that's, they have full, that's full blown cities full blown empires right? like they like they had a hierarchy they had a, a system they're not just these like mindless bugs the nerubians are 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 very sophisticated i'm interested in getting to know them more it makes me wonder by like, killing them of course truly, what were they that's like? how we get to know things you know, were they were they these savage beings that were incomprehensibly evil and suffering under the shadows of of the old gods or were they thriving because they were one of the original, like, one of, like, the big original, like, sects of, like, living beings on the planet? Hold on, my fucking Roomba is, like, running over the floor. She was stuck on the rug in the bathroom, dumbass. 
Pyrrhonus House was just Wally bots, bro. Yeah, that get fucking okay, stuck have, on everything. They have Roombas. The Rubians and Klaxi probably a threat since they're subterranean and can access closer to the world soul. The Klaxi from Pandaria were very I cool. I mean, yeah. maybe uh, it depends on what, like, the true focus of them is. I don't think that the Nerubians are focused on, like, corrupting the world soul. <laughs> so I don't really think that they're a threat in that regard. I think that that would be probably antithetical to their own existence. They don't seem, like, I understand that the Klaxi, for instance, you know, worship their old one or whatever. Uh, right. But that was also a long, long, long time ago. And what they worshipped may have been a little different than what we are presented with now. Um, today is the Emerald Dream patch, which uh, I'm very excited for. <clears throat> the Emerald Dream yes. has been kind of one of the biggest enigmas in the World of Warcraft universe for a long time. I think it is it is a big uh, uh, <laughs> a, a big key to the story going on. Uh, yeah, I, think I do wonder, Dream. like us going into the the Emerald Dream and all of that. Like a, a lot of times, Azeroth has been described at the, in the past as as being, you know, uh, asleep, right? Or like a, like a, it, it was described in the past that like world souls were asleep inside of planets, and when they wake up, you know, they hatch or whatever, they come out. Uh, you know, the dream obviously dreaming happens when you're asleep. Is the Emerald Dream some kind of vision from? From our world soul, are we fucking around in the dream and we're going to wake up Azeroth because we're fucking around in the dream? Maybe. I, I, you got to remember, too, that cinematic that's released, right, for the expansion, that's technically we're looking further into the future than we currently are. Uh, this is That stuff is happening after we do what we're going to do in the Emerald Dream. So I'm wondering if our activities in the Emerald Dream, you know, in the dream of Azeroth, wake Azeroth up. Because we're down there fucking around, poking around, you know, killing shit, looting shit, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. It says the dream is what's keeping her asleep. Oh, does he say that? Okay. Uh, may may very well be let's where... See, let's uh, see more about that then. Where, ...where the world soul of Azeroth is actually being housed. Uh, I do believe, regardless of that, I do believe that the Emerald Dream is uh, a, a pacification mechanism uh, that is used to help keep Azeroth asleep. Right. I think it is a mechanism by which spirit yeah, I agree with this energy theory. is intentionally siphoned to Azeroth to keep her asleep. Um, so I do think that it is something that needs to be undone. Uh, the Legion wanted it to be undone. Uh, the the Nightmare uh, sought to undo the dream. Right, the Nightmare was uh, uh, the opposite of the dream. Reasons, perhaps, hey, but, what about uh, what does a Nightmare do, technically? If a Nightmare gets bad enough, what is it? What what happens in a Nightmare? Unless you're fucking psychotic, what does a nightmare usually do to you? When it gets really bad, it wakes you up. That's right. A dream keeps you asleep, but a nightmare t typically wakes you up. Maybe that's what that was all about. The, uh, the, 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 the whole nightmare thing was to wake up Azeroth, and the Titans are trying to keep Azeroth asleep. Ew. Digging deep here, boys. Um, but yeah, I Digging absolutely real deep. think that the, the Emerald Dream is part of why she hasn't woken up yet. And uh, so I'm hoping that uh, we will see what, I, what I'm what i kind of, look, <laughs> I think that there is always a possibility that if something happens to the dream that we might be able to then lay our eyes upon something that we've not been able to see before. <laughs> Does that make sense? Essentially, Maybe. I'm alluding to something disappearing, and what I'm alluding to disappearing is what I believe to be essentially a false sky on Azeroth. Um, and I think that a if false you, sky. Oh shit! A he thinks even the sky isn't you, real. Uh, disconnect the dream from reality. That uh, that the illusion uh, above us will will be dispelled, and that you will be able to see into the space. But are we that. are we disconnecting the dream from reality, or or are we strengthening the connection with the dream? in reality because we are in, in 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 essence bringing that new world tree in we are directly through the world tree connecting the dream to our reality we're bringing a piece of the dream into our reality so uh, are we doing some more titan work here by accident are we doing more of the titans bidding here by bringing the, this world tree into the world it, the, essentially strengthening the dream's connection to reality i don't know that's an interesting thought too Azeroth, and you will then be able to see that there are worlds very close to Azeroth that are uh, corrupted and destroyed and stuff like that. The the planets that we would see from the um, the seat of the Pantheon, uh, for instance. Um, you know, there is always look when we're talking about the Titans, we're talking about you know world shaping gods that have 
mastery over illusions that have mastery over time and space. It's and, interesting what he's saying about know. the skybox, though, and other planets. You guys know about the red star theory in WoW? You guys know about that? Like, where, wherever you are in WoW, you can, especially when I'm in, like, Stormwind and stuff, you can see this red star in the sky. It's right here. It's right here. There's an there's this red star that's always been floating around, and there was a, a WoW thread started, like, a while back that talked about this red star and what it meant, and it's... Uh, it's right here. Is it, is it me or does anyone else feel like that that red star as of now seems much brighter than it was normally? It's been, uh, this, is, this is 2020. I've been sort of analyzing it and I remember it correctly. Some of the devs mentioned about it. No idea what the hint is. Yeah, so it's, it's some sort of magical scar in Azeroth Sky, a portal that uh, Illidan ripped open with the Sargeret Keystone. I don't know if that's the case. I have seen uh there was like a dev response at some point i'd have to find it but like that red star is in fact like this guy was not just imagining shit that red star is in fact getting closer to us that is getting bigger at least whether or not it's getting bigger because it's getting closer or it's getting bigger because it's opening um so that could be an interesting play on the theory that he's talking about right now where our skybox is not the actual sky uh but in fact the uh the red star is uh, is moving is uh, is getting bigger it's getting bigger yeah oh what someone's got a screenshot of it behind azeroth's moon is this real just notice this but uh the star is in front of azeroth's moon wouldn't that imply the seat of the pantheon is getting closer oh what does the moon have to a loon i think a loon when i see the moon i don't know is the seat of the pantheon getting closer when was this posted this was a year ago. Okay, so this was like post-Legion with all that shit. I don't know. Maybe. But yeah, this dot in the sky, it's, it's, there's some lore behind it. Whether or not Blizzard has abandoned that lore or not, I'm not sure yet. But uh, there, there is something to be said for that thing. There is always a possibility that when there... Do you think that Red Star will go out in the last Titan? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, maybe that Red Star is the last Titan. I don't know. Maybe it's like something that has to do... I'm sure there's something that has to do with that in... Uh, in terms of what the red star is going to be. Is it going to get bigger? Are we going to go to it? Uh, it's still there. It's still there. I see it every time I log in when I'm in Stormwind. ...are disabled or destroyed. That reality, as you perceive it, may very well change. Uh, so, without elaborating further on that, uh, yeah, I hope you understand what, what I mean by that. Uh, so, the world could, could itself look different if we were to have a mass illusion uh, mechanism on our world. Like Remove the veil? Uh, question for Chatton Party. Who, think who any... talked uh, about removing a veil? Was that was that um, the Jailer or Sylvanas? There's like a veil over... I, I remember that conversation happening. I can't remember who said it, though. Uh, any of you think there's something in the transition animation of the war within logo cracks forming in the world? Well, I think definitely it, it alludes to the possibility yeah. of, you know, the world or the, the crust of the planet at least the in jailer some places, you he know, said it cracking uh and maybe opening up uh maybe opening pardon me opening up fissures uh maybe that is kind of suggesting the kind of the the, the breaking of kind of the mantle so to speak um if you guys have uh, been checking out my my uh youtube channel or if you've been present on the stream lately i've been talking a lot about um the logo for the last titan uh because i think it is actually giving a hint, <laughs> uh, a really big hint uh, about essentially prison mechanisms. Prison, um, me yeah, we talked about this. I mean, so, it, uh, it's all but three. confirmed at this Let's point. Let's just say <laughs> you should watch the YouTube videos if you haven't seen them. There's lots of good stuff there. That explains it uh, very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go watch mine where I talk about the title is This Is Not Azeroth. And it's it literally, I sh prove... You know, next to what Pyro's saying, that uh, in fact, what the image that we see of Azeroth in the cinematic for uh, War Within, that image is not is not Azeroth. That is the outer wall of the the jail of Azeroth, the, the imprisoned ball of Azeroth. Think better than I can off the top of my head right now. Three rings, three X packs. That's right, breaking uh, the veil, yeah. the helm yeah. shattering. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. Well, so thing, once I mean, that's already happened in the game, we have essentially shattered the sky once already. And, and proven that the sky was, in fact, a veil between two worlds. And, and the thing is, uh, you know, there's there's essentially um, some evidence from... There was some evidence from the PTR uh, back when 
uh, Battle for Azeroth was, was going to be coming out, and when the sword impacted Silithus, when you could go down into the heart chamber, there was actually this little globe of Azeroth, and it was like a custom <clears throat> model, and you know it's custom because there's actually a sword, a big sword, like, stuck into right. this globe. Yeah. And then in this globe, um, there's actually, uh, there's actually three rings on the globe, like, circling it. It's the same globe with the rings that is inside of, um, Karazhan, actually. Uh, which presumably was built um, either by Medivh or by Ajwin. I don't know. But uh, these rings essentially all have different like runes, or bl or one of one of which has like a blank design on it. And essentially, what's happening is that this custom model had the sword sticking into it, and one of the rings is like running into it, almost to suggest that Sargeras' sword is like interrupting one of these rings. Right, like jammed like, it, like he stuck a stick in a, in a spoke the, or something kind of imprisoning mechanism that makes sense um and there are two more rings one of which appears to have you know maybe shadow runes or death runes of some kind on so it. so a total of three rings we're getting a three-part expansion series maybe we're breaking one ring each one and then in the third we break the final rings or maybe they're even arcane runes and then there's another one that looks like it has like the vines of like a tree um or something or a plant kind of like strung along it which almost, I think, suggests the Emerald Dream. So, uh, and then we're seeing, you know, Sylvanas takes the helmet of the Lich King and literally shatters a hole in the fucking sky above us. So, like, there's, like, there, there's a lot of evidence to support, like, the false sky narrative. There's a shitload of stuff, so. The last time Logo looks like the same prison Eridicron is in, yeah, it's got, like, the rings yeah. around it that same. puts it in, like, a stasis prison. And yeah, I think it's, that's it's what exactly Azeroth is in, is essentially, like, a stasis prison. Yeah. Um, I don't believe Last Titan's referring to Azeroth. Yeah, I definitely think it is, considering that they've they've referred to Azeroth as the Last Titan multiple, multiple times throughout the history of this game. Uh, here, let me tell you this, man. And I, this is what I said in my Discord earlier as well. How many different theories and ideas did you hear about for why Teldrassil got burned down? Think, Just let that... Sink, just think about that for a second. How many different ideas were there? There was myriad number of ideas M me and my community made we've, we've well, well, another well, hold on that does make sense i forgot that we complete i honestly forgot that we did that remember when i just said that bringing the world tree from the dream into our reality essentially anchors the dream to our reality it's like creates a stronger connection between the two because we're taking a piece of the dream and realizing it in reality that's probably what the old world that's probably what tell uh darnassus was right that the, the the world tree there, well, Dardas is the city of the world tree, but by burning that world tree, Sylvanas was disconnecting the dream from our reality. Yeah. Nordrasil, right. Tell, yeah, so, and Nordrasil too, yeah. So there have been many attempts by others to destroy world trees. Why would they destroy world trees? Now we're starting to think, I think, I think what's happening is it's essentially disconnecting the dream from, from Azeroth to wake her up that that now i'm starting to th think that that's the case that every time we've destroyed a world tree or a world tree has been destroyed it starts to disconnect the dream from our reality and now we're going to re-strengthen that by bringing a new world tree in shit are we helping out with this stuff or what i don't know but now that's what i'm starting to think is these these trees are essentially anchors of the dream to azeroth to keep her asleep we fucking sat around and came up with ideas till the farak is the good guy yeah home. and it was it's gonna wake the that most bitch simple and obvious answer the whole time, that it was Sylvanas Windrunner. She burned the fucking tree down. Whoa. That's exactly what happened, right? So yeah. I, I implore you to not... I implore you to you, think about considering the most, the most obvious answer, and when they say the last Titan, I mean... Azeroth has been called that before. Like, we should probably that be, assume right. that it's talking about Azeroth in this case. I mean... Metzen came on stage and talked about a Titan conspiracy and the, the true intentions of the Titans for the world and the, the nature of our world itself. And like, it's like, you don't, I just, I feel like you don't come out and say shit like that on stage and then be like, oh, it's not Azeroth. Like, I don't know. That seems like a, yeah, seemed like I, a big, I agree. A big weird dis decision to me. I wonder if she's the last Titan now or the Titans we know even real Titans. That's a great question. That's a great question. Yeah, I wonder I mean, if Sargeras is a titan. King Julian, we're all slaves not living in reality. That essentially goes to, like, everything, every, you know, Sylvanas monologue from Shadowlands. 
every time she was talking, that's basically what she was talking about, is we are slaves, um, we're going to break the chain of reality, you know, break the chain, stuff like that. Uh, this world is a prison, like all that shit that she was monologuing over and over. Uh, you know, she's annoying, so we weren't listening to her, like, you know, just be quiet, bitch. But in reality, she was really talking about a lot of the stuff that we're finding out here. Also worth noting, Thrall said that sword was aimed at something, not someone. Yeah, I think it was aimed at the uh, the prison wall of Azeroth. I think he. W I don't think Sargeras was trying to kill the world soul. I think he was trying to free it. Now, his, I don't think his intention is to be a good guy, like, oh, I'm going to free you, world soul, because we've, in fact, seen him literally chop planets in half. He has killed world souls in the past. But Azeroth is a bit different. We all know that. There's something special about Azeroth's world soul. I don't think his intention was to kill her, but I do think his intention was to free her for whatever reason. And I think he was aiming at the imprisonment mechanism itself, not the, uh, the world soul. I mean, there is a there is a possibility that the Titans yeah, are we're like the Matrix, consular exactly. type beings. I mean, they do appear as such at the seat of the Pantheon before they take their like form, essentially, which seems to be just like of their own accord. Like they they just fucking choose to do that or something. Um, so there's always a possibility that like Sargeras and Azeroth are different than the others, and that the you know them trying to say that like Sargeras, who clearly looks very fleshy and demonic, and you know fiery is obviously a lot different than the other titans so um you right. know maybe there is something different i don't know it'd be i mean what if uh what if azeroth and sargeras are like two of like the chaos gods in like the universe and the titans are the order gods and they like tried to imprison azeroth or steal her from sargeras or something who fucking knows maybe that's why he's she's so sargeras's pissed. bae i don't know maybe but maybe it's maybe just a, it's just maybe a, sargeras is just a simp and he's been simping this entire time, and he's trying to get his bay back. I don't know. He wants his baby back. Baby back ribs. Thought. Uh, at this point, though, the Titans are uh, our biggest our biggest threat. I would also say, for those who haven't heard me say this as well, like I think Midnight, I think the expansion Midnight is going to be, uh, I think that's a curveball. I think they're, <laughs> I think that's a big jabate. Yeah. I, think that, I think that Midnight's not actually going to be primarily about, about the Void. I think it's actually going to be about the Light. I think they might finally pull the the light. That's a stretch, maybe. I, I mean, I mean, Chris Metzen did say himself that uh, uh, the 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 reason why we're going to be dealing with the elves and Quel'Thalas and all that is the Sunwell and the fact that the Void is trying to infect the Sunwell or use the Sunwell in some way. If you've ever made a Void Elf, um, you have played through the story where the Void Elves essentially go to do their rite of passage as an elf and they go visit the Sunwell, right? And and uh, and and that's allowed. Kaelthas allows them. Well, not Kael. The leader. What the fuck is his name? The high elf leader. The the blood elf leader. He allows them to come to the Sunwell, right? And he allows them to visit it. And against people's you know opinion of whether or not these void elves are still in fact allowed to even come here. But they come. And when they get close to the Sunwell, the void from within them just pops off. That shit goes nuts. Some crazy shit stop Lorthamar. Yes, starts going nuts around the Sunwell. Essentially, like some kind of something unlocks within the void elves, the void within, and it just unleashes the void on the Sunwell, and then they fight it back. We cleanse that shit and we get him away. There is some kind of goal for the void in terms of the Sunwell. I don't think we're going to talk about the light in the Midnight Expansion. I do think that's what that's what's going to happen in the Midnight Expansion. Is we're going to talk about the Sunwell. That's why that's all getting revamped. That's why that's all happening. We're going to protect it from the void, something like that, or maybe we fail in protecting it. But that's the whole point of that expansion, I think. Um, do you think he's played the Void Elf Heritage Quest? He's uh, hating a while. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if he's played a lot of WoW. He, he was just watching the cinematics for uh, Dragonflight like the first time the other day, so he hasn't played at least this expansion. Uh, yeah, yeah. So do you think we'll break apart the prison in the War Within? I think we will start the process Come, of breaking it apart. let us lay waste to this realm. Jedi, thank you for the sub on YouTube. I think we'll start to break the prison apart. The process of breaking it apart will start to happen. And um, and now that I think about it, like with the sword going into the planet, like I said, kind of the the uh, the analogy of like sticking a stick in a spinning, you know, like a like a bicycle wheel, right? Because those rings are kind of rotating around. I mean, you know, especially they were in the, in the cinematic, right? Where we uh, where we kill Razageth, I believe they were were they rotating around, 
Razagath uh, cinematic. Yeah, where we kill Razagath. Uh, let me see. Raz, uh, Razagath death cinematic, maybe? Bring it up here. Yeah, here it is. Uh, am I wrong? Were they rotating? Or were they He's standing done. still? No. No, they're rotating. See, yeah, they are rotating. So this, this Titan prison, which is essentially no. Azeroth's prison, we've already seen that in the other cinematic. We could essentially confirm that she is, in fact, in a prison. Right, it fits the logo and everything of the new expansion. They're rotating. The damage is too great. They're slowly moving around. And when they stop moving, they're about to breaks, right? See how they're moving? The now watch them stop right great. before it breaks. Pause. They're about to they break. Shit breaks. So what I think he essentially did with his sword is he's jamming that mechanism. Right? He's this is what Azeroth literally looks like in the fucking cinematic. I mean, this is what we're seeing. So the, the, he, he's essentially stuck his little, you know, he stuck his stick in between there, right? He stuck his stick in and he jammed it. Now, when he jammed it, I think part of not only what was happening with the imprisonment of the world soul is, is Azeroth, uh, that, that whole imprisonment mechanism also creates like a shadow over certain things in the world, right? The Titans have, have, have hidden a lot of things from us on the surface of Azeroth, not just in the core of Azeroth too, right? And we know that when uh, when the Dragonflight cinematic came out, right? When Dragon when the Dragonflight cinematic came out, what was the whole point of that? It was that all of a sudden, uh, something that was once covered up is now uncovered, and we still haven't figured out why exactly the Dragon Isles awoke, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all dragony and friendly and shit. But what happened here? Ten thousand years ago, that shit was imprisoned, and then all of a sudden, for whatever reason. For whatever reason, the Dragon Isles suddenly awoke. Right? Land slumber. Hidden. Even from our own eyes. Shit was hidden. Sargeras' sword is now poked in, in interrupting things that that prison was doing. Then you must light yeah, he jammed his cock in exactly, yeah. Bless yeah. the path home. Here it is. All this time has passed, and now Sargeras' sword has jammed the imprisonment mechanism. Suddenly, what was once covered is now being uncovered. You know, the, the glow of the water. I still haven't figured out why the water was glowing there. It's very interesting. Like, why the hell is the water glowing the way it is? A, you know, some magic seeping up from, from inside of Azeroth? Who knows? But now, the Dragon Isles that were once covered up, in fact, by the Titans, I would say, is now uncovered. Right? And now we see that happening. There's also all kinds of Titan scripts in here. I mean, look at this shit. All of this stuff in the cinematic. Look at that. That's all Titan script stuff. That's all Titan magic and everything. It's clearly, the, you know, obvious that these Titans were, in fact, covering up this aisle. For whatever reason, we don't know yet. But all this stuff was covered up, and then the dragons come back, and whoop de doo we, ha we have our shit back. Did this all get triggered by the sword? Maybe. That, that, that does make sense. Invasion... You know, you're pretty sure that glow shit. is Azerite. I was and thinking that too, that the blue, blue we'll bluish orange Illyria. tinge, which is what we've seen typically with Azerite, the blood seeping out, maybe. I went near the sun well before it made by come out. By a lupus, that's a take, but and yeah, okay. Out. So I'm not really sure that's right. if that's going to be an issue or not. But uh, yeah, there is also the possibility that um, the wells themselves have uh, something to do with the state of the of the world, but that's a different discussion. I'm looking forward to Midnight. Uh, the most, honestly, it's about elves, so it's a win in my book. Yeah, being able to unite the elf tribes is pretty fucking sick. Yeah, that'll be cool. And going to Quel Quel'Thalar is pretty fucking awesome as well. Quel Quel'Thalas? Quel'Thalas, Quel Quel yeah. You, which, I don't remember. I can't remember. There's too many Quells. But yeah, there's there's lots of... Was it Jailer that started the machine under Ice Crown uh, that, that woke the Dragon Isles, I think? Maybe. World of Warcraft is swinging a in a direction that is hitting on the narrative beats that I think... What's the plan you know, I find like in a while? All the uh, world the content stuff. Go back into um, the Emerald Dream and do a bunch of stuff. So, you know, when they come out and they start talking about the Emerald Dream and Titans and, you know, uh, conspiracies <laughs> about Titans, uh, you know, it's really hard it's for right, me to, uh, to not want to be interested in that. So, ultimately, I think uh, the combination of, like, the passion of, of Chris Metzen... Uh, I thought he was going to say the passion I, of the Christ for some I reason. I trust like, what, what is he talking him a lot now? more than uh, 
other people. Uh, and I just think, like, stage <laughs> presence-wise... That's like, it. Confirmed he, here first. Mel Gibson is, in fact, the final. This is the last Titan. That's right. Mel Gibson is the last Titan. Confirmed here. Live. Even Ian Hazakostas was just, like, he seems, like, in a much... Like better, better mood. How's the viewer leech like, go? By the way, I think they're still what he's they're watching Addison because he's a better he streamer. Like I don't know. Like I think Ian of the past seemed like dead inside. <laughs> Does that make sense? I think he seems so drained and like just kind of like checked out for a while. And I fe I felt like this BlizzCon was very different. Like he seemed a lot more energetic and like excited and like it's it seemed like maybe he was finally getting to like make some of the changes that he wants because you, I don't know, man. Like, the way that the executives in these companies are able to, like, restrict what people can do is really, it's really fucked, man. So, there is always the possibility that, like, that's been, you know, loosened. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's not even a possibility. It is, in fact, confirmed that that has been loosened. Microsoft, um, in an interview with Bloomberg... Just the other day, I had the article not too long ago. I, fi I can't find that shit again. But it's, they confirmed that um, Blizzard is no longer under the Activision umbrella. They are split apart. They are two separate entities. So Blizzard is its own standalone entity, once again, for the first time since Wrath of the Lich King. Since before the release of Wrath of the Lich King. Blizzard and Activision no longer are related to each other. And Microsoft themselves said not only is Blizzard separated from Activision now. This was all in the Bloomberg thing. You got to find it. Um, but it was a Bloomberg interview. Not only is Blizzard separate now, they are, in fact, separate from Microsoft. They, Phil Spencer said, like, we don't see a reason to um, interfere with Blizzard and what they're doing. We're going to let them cook. We're just going to let Blizzard cook. Blizzard's going to cook, and we're going to eat what they're, what they're making, and we think we're going to like it. So, yeah, the, Chris Metzen coming back, I think, now under from under, you know, Bobby's boat. Bobby's boat is sailing away in January. He's actually leaving the company permanently. Uh, he has his own creative freedom again, just like he did back when Blizzard first started. Being given more creative freedom. Yeah, they're once again a small indie dev company. Yeah. Not even a meme love, anymore. Yeah. You know, I mean, it is their fucking job. It is what they What's up, do, Brownie? you know, then, you know, every day they wake up and do this shit. So they, they've, you know, you've got to love it. If you didn't love it, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do it, I think, after enough time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it definitely, you know, there's definitely still been some times in the past where, like, holy shit, there were some bad systems, and I think, like, it was, I think the page started to turn a little bit when they, when they came out and they admitted that they were designing systems to be, like, destroyed after the end of an expansion, like, to be irrelevant. Yeah. Like, when they admitted that that was their design, like, their actual design philosophy was that they didn't care and that it was just going to be an expansion cycle system. That was like, wow, dude, like, I I can't, like, I was kind of shocked that they admitted that. Um, and that kind of, you know, that was, I think, the the interview with John Height and Holly and I think Ian, that I think that was the one that Preach did. Um, and those were, that was a fantastic set of interviews, if you guys haven't seen that. Um, highly recommend that. Uh, but yeah, I think that was kind of where it started. And then to be able, I mean, the fact that they put BlizzCon on, you know, as like a free thing to watch online as well. I think really shows like they are they're definitely trying to like gain some faith back and i yeah. think that that's a good way to do it you know yeah 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 they make it free sure i mean they kind of did yeah, I, the three day early access thing was kind of fucked i'm not gonna lie but it is what it is uh so if we do break apart the seal in the war with in the war within which part of it do you think uh we will free and do you think the titans notice uh, and as a result of the Titan noticing, we have a cinematic with them talking about returning to Azeroth and trying to stop us from damaging the seal any further. Well, I think we will we, we will definitely damage the seal a little bit in the in the war within, and it must lead to some seepage through the night well or the sun well. It must lead to the, something has to do with the sun well. That's where the next expansion has to do with. So, what part of her seeps through? I don't know. It's, it, I don't think any part of her starts to seep through. I think we just start to hear her voice more clearly, right? Like the voices get louder. We start to hear more of what she's saying and all that. We won't fully break it yet, but it probably has something to do. Maybe she starts talking to us through the sun well. But there is a relation between that and the midnight expansion. We already know that. That is, in fact, confirmed. I think <laughs> she's a giant cock seeping through. Yeah, there you go. Giant cock. That's confirmed here. Live. Yeah. Footed as wrath confirmed. Fuck okay, it. Like. Yeah, yeah Azeroth becomes a hentai anime. And, and like, 
there you go. So I, I think that was pretty pretty cool. So those things combined um, are what brought me back, and uh, and I will still be playing Final Fantasy fourteen. Like obviously, people are gonna come in and be uh, like, "Oh, are yeah, you yeah. quitting 14? No, it's still a no, great the, game. Final okay. Fantasy fourteen has for, cat girls. He will reasons. continue to play. Uh, and as I've told my mods and I've said on streams before, I, I play old school RuneScape way more than either World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy. So, like, and I don't stream that game at all. So, you know, what do you think about full reset to WoW after the last Titan? It. I think that there are mechanisms within the game. Listen, uh, let me let me put it this way. I think that if you can re-originate, I think if you can re-originate a world, if Azeroth is like a god of creation and destruction, yeah, like god god, then I think that Azeroth can re-originate the universe. Oh shit! Wow two. Wow two. Guys, that's wow two. If we awaken. This is the first time I've seen the storyline uh, reach a point where there could be a WoW 2. Now, I've been trying to force this on us. I uh, Originally, I said, oh, maybe Nazoth, you know, wins and we get a WoW 2 because he, we were in a nightmare the entire time or something. That's could have happened, didn't happen. Then I said, maybe the Jailer wins. Maybe we're going to the Shadowlands. We realize we've been dead all along. Nazoth killed us. The Jailer tells us that he, he wakens us up or something. Bam, we come back. WoW 2. Neither of those things happened, so I'm 0 for 2 on that. Reawakening Azeroth's soul, who then has the power to recreate the entire world of Warcraft? WoW 2. What if we awaken the soul and we get WoW 2? What if it starts, uh, what if it starts everything over? Mount Collectors might be angry. But what if this is the beginning of WoW 2? What if the World Soul Saga is, in fact, the end of this saga the end of WoW 1, and it takes us into WoW 2. It would be called Worlds of Warcraft. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That could be it. Who knows? Maybe this is what we're getting, we're going to get to. I mean, world Ultimately, revamp like, and all that shit that's happening. Ultimately, like, that's kind of what it comes happening. down to, is that, like, if, 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 if other beings can do re-origination, like Sargeras and the Titans and Argus and, you know, then, re then Azeroth came re-origination. To, probably on a, on, a, on, a, on a galactic scale, like on a universal scale. So um, I think that if if there is, uh, you know, the opportunity, I mean, they're talking about, you know, finishing up this story arc and leading into, into the next 30 years of, 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 of WoW. So, like, I think that given the fact that there is an in-universe reset yeah. button, like, you're probably gonna use it. You know, I feel like it's Chekhov's gun kind of sitting there. Like, we've talked about that several times today on stream, but yeah. I think it's just kind of... Actually, maybe we haven't. Maybe that was in Discord. I mean, I just... mean, lore has been retconned before, but I thought that the origina re-origination chamber was not meant to, uh, like, re-originate re the world or recreate the world. It was, like, supposed to, like, purge the, the surface of the world of all life. Like, that's essentially what it was gonna do. It was, like, just create a... It, like engulf the world in flame like you know what i mean just re not recreate the world necessarily but like purge it of anything that could be infecting it or life or whatever and it would have essentially killed us in the process which is why we didn't want to reactivate the reorigination chamber but um he's kind of talking about it in another context here just kind of sitting there. It, it's like the gun it's been retconned be before so it might be you know again. uh so uh we're we'll see uh We'll we'll see what happens. Do you fit Zareth Mortis in any of your theories nowadays? The whole everything is a robot thing kind of fucks up most of my own thought process for future story. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, that's the hard like that's one of those things like I will. They went too far with I Zareth Mortis, to, but I kind of wish that the Zareth Mortis lore was just not real. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of I just kind of wish that that was just all just not canon and like not relevant. Yeah. And like, like they're like, nah, that didn't happen. Like. Yeah. It's, it's, oh it is, man. It is hard to they deal did, with. They did, dude, they managed to do Sylvanas dirty, the Jailer dirty. How do you fuck up the Realm of Death? Like, come on, man. Mm. How do you fuck that up? Hey, well, uh, it yeah, up. it's a tough one. Shadowlands is probably the worst expansion ever, in my opinion. I think yeah, it's worse think than so. DFA. There, I, I said it. I think Shadowlands. I don't think it's, I don't, I think it's worse than WAD. I think Shadowlands was worse than Warlords of Draenor. If you're, if we're talking lore. 
Shadowlands did have more content than WAD because, you know, it had faded rating and everything. They kind of kept it going a little bit longer. WAD's main issue was lack of content. But in terms of storyline and things, I, I think WAD was way better than Shadowlands. Shadowlands' story was, was really bad. Really bad. Really, really bad. Shadowlands is worse than BFA. And Arthas, that dude. They did Arthas stuff. dirty, Watt too. is only worse, though, because... Watt is only worse because the, the content stopped. If we if we just keep... If we just look at the content we got out of uh, Warlords of Draenor, the content we got was good. The content we got was good. Garrisons had their own problems, but the content that we got out of Warlords of Draenor and the storyline and everything else was good. It's just it stopped for a year. We had nothing. That's why Watt got... At the tail end was just absolutely horrendous. But uh, Shadowlands... The content we got was not that good. Torghast was not that good. The storyline was not good. The Jailer was not a good villain. The raids were fine because raids are always fine in World of Warcraft, but uh, I don't know. Shadowlands was just, to me, it was the worst. You know who was. didn't get done dirty, though? Garrosh. We'll take that, right? We'll take that small W. Yeah, Garrosh. We'll take yeah. that small W. Redemption arc, maybe. Garrosh got got done right. I feel like it was. Wrath I think of, it, I feel the like the it Lich King got good. completely fucked. But then you know, I wish Metzen could retcon Arthas stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm playing back through classic Wrath thinking. of the Lich King, and it's so fucking weird to to go through these zones <laughs> and the stories, and th and th be thinking of it like, oh, the well, jailer this is the jailer, did all this, though. yeah. It's yeah, exactly. fucking, it's Come, fucked. Let us it fucks my brain up. I mean, realm. Sapphire, thank you so much for the follow. Chat. Chat. You're going to hate scourge. me when I say this. It pisses me off because, oh, because it kind of makes sense, dude. Even with like some of the dialogue that NPCs use, it can make sense. And it's so I don't want it to make sense. That it I don't does, want it to make sense, like, yeah. Because I wish that it didn't. <laughs> I wish that it didn't, but it, but it does. Uh, but I don't know. It, it, it's it's just bad, man. And then he was they, a they robot best construct characters. thing. Like, what do you? What even? What even is that? Like, what even is that? Yeah, that's tough. It's tough. Shadowlands yeah. can remain in the shadow. We, we kill. We kill the jailer only to realize that he is in fact just a robot thing, like the others, and he was created by the you know the fucking original things that create shit. I don't know. It was kind of jank. It was janked. I have a whole video about rewriting the Jailer storyline to actually be good. It's like the main video on my channel. If you go to my channel page on YouTube, it's uh, it's pretty good. I wrote it. It's pretty good. The Jailer is. I am biased. Though, it was all a dream myself. from Nazoth. Who is still alive? I, I, you know, I think that the old gods are are dead for now. I don't Look, think let me say something. is dead still. Zalatath is gathering old god blood. I mean, come on, come on. At least I hope he's not. And dead. someone, someone told me recently, uh, they they made some connections to um, Cthulhu. Cthi what the fuck is it? Cthulhu's like daughter, who resurrects him. Huh? Maybe Zalatath resurrects Nazoth. And if that happens, I wonder. Nazoth did help Zalatath. Maybe Zalatath. What I've been thinking this entire time is like, what if old gods have like a, an ability, like a Horcrux ability, where they can keep parts of themselves alive to be resurrected later? And that was how Zalateth was like in the blade, right? Like the blade was essentially her Horcrux, where she was keeping herself alive. What if that's why she gave Nazath the blade? So he could put a piece of himself inside of it to be resurrected later. Even, even deeper. She gave us to Nazath. Nazath gave us the gift of Nazath, right? He essentially penetrated our foreheads with that freaking gift of Nazoth shit. That shit still exists. Unless you chose to cleanse it. Some people didn't. That shit still exists. What if we're all carrying around... What if we are the Horcruxes for Nazoth? What if we're all carrying around pieces of him? And he's not dead. But he's in fact just waiting to be reassembled. Yeah. Horcru wow, Horcrux is confirmed. That's right. If he will look the same or if he will look different... I would kind of love to see, like, maybe Nazoth in, like, his old form. Like, I think Nazoth looks... I think all the old gods look different now than what they used to, personally. Maybe so there's I, that I, image that always gets I thrown around kind of, of, like of to the see, Black Empire, um, where Nazoth if, has, like, more eyes and more tentacles. Maybe that's if they do form, what maybe. that would look like. I mean, I think that they were... Pro like, I kind of want them to be, like, wondrous and, like... How would I put this? Like, 
bright and green. And bright and green. Very intelligent and um, Nizoth is maybe intelligent. That's what's cool have about flowers him. on them. I know that sounds weird, but yeah. Like, see, I, this is the image I'm talking about. Where like I've seen this picture before. May, could this be like the 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 ultimate Super Saiyan? You know, ultra ultra instinct version of Nizoth? Maybe. Uh, this was always like a key art. This is from a book, so I don't know if this is actually like the ultimate version of Nizoth. And we've always kind of seen like the the watered down version of Nizoth, like what we actually fought was like a you know the janked version of Nizoth, not the real version. Could be. I just refuse to believe that Nizoth got played and got killed, especially given the fact that we did a quest line literally at the start of Dragonflight where Nizoth recognizes us. We're, we went back in time, but we have our thoughts, we have our memories. Nazoth was able to look in our head, and essentially by doing that, he was seeing the future. He saw how we were going to kill him. I refuse to believe that he saw that. He saw us use the power of friendship and fucking the, the, the little necklace of Azeroth to beam him to death, and he just let it happen. I feel like he came up with a backup plan. I feel like he came up with a plan. He's like, oh, okay, so that's how I'm going to die? Bitches, I'm going to play you. I'm going to let you think it happened. I'm going to let it happen. But in fact, by you guys believing that I'm dead, now I'm no longer a problem to you. Now I don't got to deal with you. Now you're not going to be resisting me. So now I'm going to play from the background. Yeah, the power of magic and friendship. Uh, like, what if they're that like... That summarizes Dragonflight for you. Like, beautiful. Like, I I'm not trying to be beautiful. weird. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Like, like... I mean, if, beautiful if and they tentacles used to be a tie. different He's life about form tie. that like gets cor like that was corrupted, or like turned into something else because the Titans are f fucking stupid, you know, like maybe they look completely fucking different. I I, I don't know. Like I maybe. I don't know. Is there? I mean, I guess it would be like I guess what I would think maybe like it's a like the curse of flesh would be like, right? I think that, uh, mm, yeah, I don't know how to describe what I'm trying to say, which is very fitting for Lovecraftian entities. About Zareth, Zareth Mortis, I heavily disagree with the they're all robot narratives. One piece of dialogue says that the Pantheon of Death already existed as entities, as souls before occupying their robotic vessels. Raven, that, would, that actually kind of makes sense because that could actually relate sure, yeah. to some of the kind of uh, under the surface lore for Shadowlands. Cause there's an there's a like a mushroom thing that's been in the Shadowlands for like a fucking shit long time. It's been no pun intended because it's fungus. It's Go been there for a long be time, than Goku, and it's in way. um Ardenweald. So thank you. Good. In Ardenweald, yeah, yeah. There's like this mushroom guy, an ancient mushroom thing that talks about how Ardenweald used to be different, and like the wilds here did not used to look like this, yeah. and that everything changed when like when she came, and and I'm and I'm pretty sure he's talking about the Winter Queen. So interesting. Uh, I don't know. Like maybe the, I don't know. There I don't know. Maybe <laughs> the Winter Queen. Know. Maybe the Winter Queen has been tied a lot to a loon too. Like the you know direct connections to a loon and all that shit. So maybe maybe there's a connection there. May, maybe you know Zalatesh is a loon. We've talked about this stuff a little bit. I I don't know. There's there's connections here that haven't connected yet. The souls of the Eternals are taken from their former bodies and put into constructs perhaps that give someone else more control over them or make them adhere to certain uh programming does that make sense like if i take Maybe. your soul and put it in this robot that i can control or that i can program yeah, right, right, can right. i basically like make make you do like right. will it make you do things will it make you act a certain way so the jailer literally certain... was a a robot and then on the robot on his robot body, he had fucking domination magic. Like, they, they, like he was double dominated, essentially. Uh, damn, I just searched dead jailer and got like a bunch of fucking morbid ass pictures. I should have been more specific. Uh, where's the picture of the jailer's dead body? Yeah, because he had he he was not just like a uh, like a construct at the end, like a robot body. His the domination magic. Why can't I find this picture? Was literally carved into his body. Yeah. Dead, uh, wow, dead jailer. Uh, final jailer. I don't know what I could find. I'll, I'll keep looking for it while the video goes here, but I'll find it. Certain things. I guess what I'm, what I'm talking about is like taking a, a soul, a consciousness, and putting it in a, in, a, in a robot. And then, like, is there a risk of that robot becoming, like, connected to something else that could then, you know, do something to it? So, 
Um, Here it is. Yeah. I this don't is, know. This for is, fucking for this is this this is the jailer uh, after we killed him, and you could see the rune magic was actually carved so deep into him. It was it was into his robot body, like the carvings are there even after we killed him. That's some intense shit. So that domination magic, which might be Titan magic for all we know now, was uh, was deep. It was deep. For all I know, the first him. ones could have been he was the, out of control. The, the ones that came before the Eternals. Isn't the Winter the Queen a Loon's sister? Yeah, second... yeah, I think that was. I think that's what it is. That's her connection to a Loon. She's her sister. The ones came in their replacement and ordered the Shadowlands and changed it and made it probably a lot more like what the Titans would want. So, fuck, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I, the first one's lore is tough. It's tough. That's tough. And, uh, and I'm glad to see that there's been pretty much zero mention of it ever since then. So yeah. I'm fine with that. <laughs> First ones are the last ones. Confirmed. Yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, I love I love these videos. I love these lore deep dives. These has been a lot of fun to go into and uh, and talk about. Yeah, I, I do I do still think there's some connection. I When the first time I saw Zalatesh's eyes, I remember thinking there's got to be some connection with the way it looks and what's going on here. And she's, she's something more than we know. And we'll find out what that something more is soon.